Okay, well, morning everyone. Today, I'm finally getting round to doing a slightly overdue owner video of this new to me bike, the Yamaha XJR 1300. It's a 2012 plate which had 14,200, no, 14,100 on the clock when I had it. So, uh, I've had a chance to ride it a little bit so far, I'm very happy with it. I uh, did have a problem with the battery when I first had it. It's had uh, a new battery put on, so all's good now. So it's pretty standard. One thing I have done, see down here, I've put an oil cooler guard on. Not only does it look a lot smarter with that on, but obviously stones coming up and whatever. Now protected. No excuse of the dirt on it. It is in need of a clean now, but uh, it's not too bad. But it will get the works later this week. So I'll just walk around it so you can have an all-round look. So there's no real modification that's been done to this bike. The only thing that had been added before I added was the front fender extender there. That's always useful. It's in pretty good condition. All underneath. There's no rust or whatever. It's got twin horns on it which make it sound pretty loud when that's needed one thing I do wish it had on it, which it hasn't is a rear hugger that would have been useful I may have to think about putting one of those on at some time at some point but generally it's in pretty good nick and it certainly seems to pull well and you could you could pull a caravan with this thing. The amount of grunt it's got in all gears. Okay. Well, one thing I should put about this bike, which is a little bit of a surprise, doesn't come with ABS. Uh, I would have thought a bike of this size would certainly have had ABS. But it's not just this model, it's the whole range of the XJRs, even in the newer ones, still no ABS. But having said that, the brakes seem pretty efficient. So, it's just one of those things. Moving on up to the clocks. As you can see, nice retro clocks, just what I like. There's no fancy features, all you get, you get a fuel gauge, you get two trips. There's no gear indicator with this bike either, which is one thing I would have liked, constantly looking in front of the gear. And also, some of you may not realise that these bikes have only got five gears, and that's a bit of a mistake in my opinion by Yamaha. Surely this bike warrants six gears. There's a lot of other people say you've got these that they wish it had a six gear. I'm constantly looking for it. But no, none of the XJRs have got six gears. So that's just one of the things you have to put it with. So there's no fancy features at all, but I'm quite happy with that. I don't want a lot of settings to mess about with. You've got just what you need and no more so we'll take it out on the road and I'll talk a bit more about it see you in a minute
Well, good morning. Finally getting round to doing my new owner review of this Yamaha XJR 1300. Done a little bit of one before, but nothing proper. Said I'd do a proper one, so going over to see Maverick for a brew. So I thought I'd take the chance to do a review on the way over. Hopefully it won't rain, it's not supposed to. I think it's about four degrees. So well wrapped up, so no problems there. Off we go. Okay, well, as some of you may know, if you watched our little trip out to Bridge North and I said a few things just having had this bike, I was having a problem or two with how long it was taking to start and I was trying to, it was taking five or six seconds but it started to get a little bit worse than that so I thought well I'm not having this it's under warranty so back up to the bike shop and uh, told them they said oh that doesn't sound right I said no so cutting the story down a bit arranged for it to go in on the Monday so I took it in last Monday and uh, they rang me up later in the day and they said can't find anything wrong with it they said it's starting fine straight away and I said well I said I'm surprised to hear you say that because it's never started straight away for me even when it's hot it takes a bit longer than it should so they kept it in they said we'll keep it till the following day try it when it's really cold so next day spoke to him again same again started straight away we've left it started it again started straight away can't find anything wrong so I said all right then I'll come and fetch it I'll just have to see how it goes so I went up there picked the bike up and he said while you're here he said we'll start it we'll show you I said all right so out we went to the bike, put the key in, turn the ignition on, press the button, nothing, would not have it. And in fact, not only did it take too long to start, he couldn't start it at all. It was turning over, just not firing. So I thought, well, at least that saves me looking stupid. At least they can see now there's something wrong. So he said, OK, leave it with us. Anyway, cutting it right down to the last bit now, before it gets too boring it turns out that although they put a new battery on before I had the bike the new battery was naff they put another new battery on it having checked loads of things and couldn't find anything wrong and that was it problem solved so I had the bike back yesterday because I was just starting night so I said keep it a few days keep checking it which I did they brought it back yesterday didn't even have to go and fetch it they dropped it off and uh, I tried it and they were quite right started straight away tried it two or three times now this morning I've just been out to start it now and it took about three seconds, two and a half, perhaps two and a half, certainly not five, six or seven like it was taking before. So if, it's, if it stays like that when it's cold, then uh, I can live with that. So now, back to the bike itself. As I previously said, but for anyone who hasn't seen the other video, a lot of people have been surprised that I changed the Honda CBF 1000 that I had before when as far as everybody knew it was the perfect bike for me it was the right height, a very low seat height being I'm quite short I could put both feet flat on the floor 
I never had any problems with it in the 12 months I had it. So yeah, the, what was the reason I had for changing it? Well, I haven't got a good reason, other than I like this one. I'd spotted it online at the local bike shop a couple of weeks or so before I had it. Kept looking at it online, no intention of thinking of having it. I went up there to book my Honda in for a service and MOT and uh, of course looked at this while I was up there couldn't resist it started chatting conversation went on and one thing led to another then I found myself asking what sort of trading I could get on Honda and it wasn't as quite as good as I would have hoped for but it wasn't too bad of a deal and of course that was it I just couldn't resist so I bought this having had no good reason to buy it other than the fact I wanted it so that's where we are so what with the, the weather we've had and of course the bike's been in that, back in the shop all last week I haven't done too many miles on it yet but I've had enough of a ride on it to uh, get some early opinions of it and it's all positive stuff the uh, the gearbox is a lot smoother than on the Honda the Honda was very clunky which is a talked about thing with Hondas clunky gearboxes best one I've ever had was on that Suzuki I had that GSR it was a lovely gearbox on there but uh, yeah so the gears are a lot smoother get the usual little clunk putting it down into first but don't, there's any bike where you don't get that and uh, it's a similar riding position to under the sit up comfy position there's no weight on your wrists your neck's not under any strain so that's all fine I haven't done any distance on it of course yet but uh, can't see that being a problem certainly wasn't on the Honda and I don't think it will be on here either um, power wise as you'd expect it's a 1300 engine and while it's not a sports bike and you couldn't compare it to one it's got loads of grunt just pulls and pulls you could probably pull a flaming caravan with this thing and it's got plenty of power for overtaking as you'd think it would have there's no shortage of power but like I say, it's no sports bike. You're not going to be setting any uh, quarter mile records or anything with it, but it's still no slouch. I was surprised there's no ABS on these XJRs. Even on the uh, newer ones, there's still no ABS fitted on them, which I found a bit surprising. Although well, the brakes do seem fine, but I would have thought ABS would have been on it. And the biggest surprise of the lot, really, is that it's only got five gears. And a lot of people who own these bikes highlight that as a fault. You'd think that Yamaha would have made it a six-gear bike. And uh, it could certainly do with one. You keep finding yourself looking for it. But no doubt I'll get used to it. There's no gear indicator on here, which again would have been useful. But they're just little niggly things really, that's... can't really uh, call them faults, it's just things I'd rather it had, given a choice. I think the looks of the bike... Uh, well, I don't... I mean, personally I don't think it could be better, I love the naked look. That's why I've always liked the Bandit so much. And uh, yes, I did put a lower fairing on the Honda, but um, I was never overly happy with the look of that lower fairing on the Honda, it was very narrow, so I'm quite happy to have this bike. And like I've, <laughs> I've said a few times now, 
and it's one of those time will tell things I want to try and keep this one as it is without too many add-ons I have put um, a guard on the front of the oil cooler which it does look better with it on but I did it mainly for the protection against stones and whatever flying up the one thing that I have put on which I didn't need to but I just did it because the other one looked poor was the I put a new number plate on plus this one is not advertised in the bike shop so I don't really see why I should go around free advertising plus the letters are uh, lot nicer on this one so yeah I have bought a number plate which I didn't need to do but just looks better with it on apart from that done nothing to it I'm not planning on uh, changing the exhaust I can't swear I never will to be all truthful because <laughs> uh, I'm constantly looking through things and checking things out and whatever online so I'm not going to state as a fact I will never change that exhaust because uh, I think I did that actually with the Honda and look what happened when I changed it so possibly in the future I'll see but certainly not yet so but apart from that no not doing anything to it I think it looks great just as it is so uh, so that's that uh, this will probably be the longest run I've done actually going over to Quinton as I said to see, see Maverick let's hope he's got the kettle on um, I don't know what long rides we're doing this year I know obviously we're going to uh, Ellen Valley in May for our Motor Evers weekend looking forward to that and, and Lake Vernwy in uh, September a uh, couple of camping weekends with uh, loads of friends all turn up so we're really looking forward to that so those will be two decent runs probably take it down to Swansea at some point this year I usually go down there a fair bit I haven't been so much lately with all these damn restrictions on but normally I go to Swansea two or three times a year so may well to go down on the bike in the summer so that'll be it there's no foreign trips for me this year not going on the uh, French tour for uh, financial reasons mainly but I fully intend to be back the tour in next year 23 one thing I should say I did mention it before but not everybody's seen that video with Maverick in Bridge North this little screen on the front when I first had the bike I thought I'm not too keen about on that screen I think I'll take it off so which I did and uh, as soon as I went out I realized it's not just about the looks, it made a massive difference the wind hitting me in the chest even at the speed I'm doing now which is under 60 it was quite uncomfortable and, and obviously the quicker you went the worse it was so as soon as I got home I put it back on again and uh, the screen will be staying where it is now apart from anything else I've got used to the looks and also if I didn't know that on where would I put my stickers so uh, that's going to stay so um, yeah I, I, you're quite surprised really I'd never have thought a little screen like that would have made so much difference didn't occur to me when I was taking it off I thought it can't be doing much but I was proved completely wrong so uh, changing bikes back to that I uh, I wasn't looking to change the bike as I think I've already said I was quite happy with what I had this isn't quite as good for me in respect of it's a bit higher than the CBF and I can only just put the balls of both my feet down at the same time 
so paddling it backwards off the drive or times when you've got to do that it's not as easy to maul about in fact I can see I'll have to get off and push it back sometimes if, uh, if it's not on flat ground or if it's a bit gravelly so that is a downside as far as for me being short but I can manage I can uh, get my feet down enough to manage and obviously pulling up just put one foot down nice and flat no problem and uh, it just it feels a much bigger bike it's um, a lot wider than the Honda was Honda had a very narrow tank on it and uh, this is like the more sort of retro big tank out in front of you and it feels a lot wider actually sat on it Maverick said when I was travelling along behind him it looked a beefy bigger, much bigger bike which is uh, what it is basically I haven't noticed uh, any real difference in the power yet to be honest the Honda had plenty of power I never moaned about lack of power with Honda this has got a little bit more torque according to figures but not enough for somebody like me to notice really I'm not going to go into how much torque it's got all this newton meters ready cobblers and everything I don't understand it I don't pretend to all I know is it'll pull in practically every gear and you also handling it around town at slow speeds as I did in Bridge and North in a lot of traffic no problem easy to manoeuvre although it's a, a big quite heavy bike it's easy to manoeuvre at slow speeds it's not jerky at all so it seems as though it's uh, a bit of an all-rounder in that respect can't imagine touring would be a problem on this I haven't got the full luggage which I had with Honda but uh, got a nice wide seat at the back easy strap a roll bag on there I've got the top box so uh, and if I've got the tent I'll just strap that on top of the roll bag I used to manage with that GSR which was nowhere near as suitable for strapping anything to as this one so uh, don't see it being any problem plus when I had those panniers on and we went down to uh, Devon on our summer tour last July we were filtering for about 40 odd miles and uh, I was constantly worried about the width of the bike at the back and uh, some of the gaps we were going through luckily none of us had a problem but uh, it was a bit of a concern especially not having done it before so at least with this I know that uh, I haven't got that to worry about Just hope this rain keeps like it's supposed to. According to my phone app, which uh, to be honest is bloody useless, it didn't have higher than a 4% chance of rain today, so just hope for once something like the right. Petrol wise, haven't really done enough yet on here to, to gauge it. I'm gonna have to uh, take notice of the mileage and I'm gonna fill up next time and work out the MPG. But I uh, don't think it's gonna be too bad. I think it won't be as good as the Honda, no doubt. That used to get a, used to get about 55, 56 to the gallon out of that. But um, there again, you buy a 1300 cc engine. I suppose fuel consumption isn't the first thing that you're looking for. Not well, saying that saving money anyway. So it'll be what it is, but uh, doesn't seem the gauge doesn't seem to be going down too fast at the moment. So up to now. I'll say I'm very happy with it 
Yes, I was a bit disappointed it had to go back to the bike shop last week because of the starting issue. So I wasn't 100% happy as you might expect. The one thing you want is to be able to rely on your bike starting well. But there again, it was the battery which it appears to have been. Then that problem has been solved, so time will tell. But uh, we shall see. But I mean, running wise, it's great. So, as long as the starting issue is now solved, then happy days from here on. I've got no heated grips on here, which doesn't bother me because I never quite, well I had them on the under, I didn't use them I tried them once I think because I don't see the point of heating the palms of your hands up and the inside underneath of your fingers when it's the outer part of your hands and fingers that get cold so the only option would be really if I did a lot of cold weather riding would be what Maverick's done and get some heated gloves which he reckons are great I bought these gauntlet type gloves, leather ones, winter use and uh, they're alright but I've got to be honest although I'm not cold in the slightest in my body I can feel the ends of my fingers tingling a bit with the cold I suppose I could try a pair of uh, just light cotton gloves inside these try that next because I'm not a fan of putting too much too much in on the battery no way you won't go in then I mean having said that the amount of things that Maverick and Goose have got running on their batteries and they seem to be fine shows that uh, they can take it but there again how much cold weather riding do I do so is it worth spending pounds and pounds on a load of heated stuff because I don't need uh, heated jackets on or anything like that they got just don't get cold got my leather jacket on today which is keeping everything out lovely nice and warm I've got the sort of waterproof stuff which does the same job so it's just my fingers my feet never get cold in these boots so I think I'll try the cotton gloves inside these route first see how we go with that Well, Maverick's got a bit of editing to do now when I get there. I didn't tell him I was going to do a review of this, ownership of this, on the way over, so uh, you might be expecting it. So, my overall thoughts, having said all that, uh, I can understand why a lot of people are surprised I changed the bike, and I've had quite a few people who've also said, oh, I don't know why you got rid of that on a uh, lovely looking bike, which it was. Preferred it to this one you've got now, although I have also had plenty of people who prefer this one. It just came down to uh, a matter of choice, what you like in the end. There, there were no faults of the Honda. And as I suspected, it didn't take the shop long to uh, resell it. It had gone in uh, a couple of weeks, more or less as soon as they I put it on uh, websites it had gone so whoever bought that which apparently somebody local to me well, no doubt they've got a very good bike there but uh, I certainly don't regret changing it for this I just love everything about this bike I think it looks like a bike should look in my opinion although a lot of people don't like the retro type of bikes that's why I've always liked those Kawasaki Z900 RS's but starting at 8 grand upwards second hand 
there was no way I was going to get one of those but now I've got this I don't want one of those I'm quite happy now now to have this but they're the sort of bikes I like which is like I said before that's why I've always liked the bandits so now I'm glad I changed the bike if the starting issue is now solved hopefully then happy days I keep being told how bulletproof these bikes are like they always say about Hondas said at the bike shop we just don't get problems with these bikes hardly ever so I'd settle for that the time will tell and I love the clocks on here you haven't got any uh, extras like some bikes you haven't got traction control all the rest of it as I said no heated grips all, no gear indicator all I've got is a, a fuel gauge and two trips that's it and I'm quite happy with that I don't want loads of things to have to set and change and perhaps there's more things to go wrong give it a little bit of beans now down here well there's no shortage on power there picking up could have given it a lot more than that and we were up to 80 mile an hour before thinking about it really so anything with more power unnecessary for me I couldn't have stood sitting here at this speed without that screen no way Anybody who doesn't ride bikes, car drivers really, they just drive cars and that's it, they really don't know what they're missing out on. You just haven't got that same thrill no matter what car you've got. It's not the same as uh, the thrill of being on a nice bike. And of course they've never done it so they don't miss it but they really are missing out. Oh, great road works don't really understand people who take their bikes off the road for the winter because there's plenty of days where you can get out I mean I wouldn't go out if it was ice ice, snow or fog those are the three things I won't go out but there's loads of days like this where you can get out So Maverick will put his editing skills and then to this uh, this video hopefully well knowing him he will he always does he makes something half decent out of uh, not much to work with so I'm not the best at this vlogging but uh, I do my best and that's it so hopefully somebody will won't mind spending 20 minutes or so having a look at it the last one I did when I had the Honda that uh, seemed to go down quite well quite surprised at that but uh, this is it now this will be my last new bike review so one thing <laughs> I'm skinned and secondly I think I finally got the bike which is going to be a long-term 
one which I'm really happy with. As long as I don't get loads of problems, which shouldn't do or be well, then I think this is it for me now. Keep this one, it's got low miles on. It's got uh, 14,200 miles on it. So it's nothing really, is it, for a bike this size? So as long as I look after it, have it serviced regularly, clean it regularly. It's got uh, ACF 50 on it already. Then it should last for years. Yeah, fine. Took uh, this morning, first start in the garage, cold. Took about two and a half seconds. It's perhaps three at a push, but nothing like it was before. Now I'm at the big man's house, there he is. <laughs> we shall turn off. <laughs> 